Hi, my name is Mike Rutkowski. I'm 68 years old. I live in Oakland, Maryland, near Deep Creek Lake. And uh, the Lord asked me to do another video, so here I am back once again. Uh, today, the Lord wants me to cover a variety of topics, so I got a lot cut out for me today. Uh, the main thing that I'm going to be talking about is that there are I guess you could say I've had a lot of people write to me, you know, asking me things like where they begin and stuff like that. And uh, the Lord wanted me to go over all that and explain to them what this journey and the truth is all about. And I guess you could say the steps that are required and everything else. Then, you know, he wanted me to talk about some of the things that are happening in my life. And uh, one of the things is, you know, one of my sisters recently passed. Uh, I didn't attend their funeral, and I'm going to explain why I didn't attend their funeral. Uh, then there's another thing he wants me to address is that there's, you know, uh, some of my uh, members have pointed out how there's this uh, one channel. I've already exposed the guy, but people are like making comments and they're basically saying a lot of lies. And uh, the Lord wanted me to address some of those lies and, uh, you know, point out what they're really all about. So uh, anyway, we're going to begin by, you know, going over where do you begin? How do you, you know, realize this much first? There's only one truth from God, one and one alone. So if, if you were someone like me, you, you could go to 50 different churches and listen to 50 different preachers, and you're going to get 50 different interpretations of the Bible. So uh, if they're, you know, supposedly only one truth, why is there so many different interpretations out there? And the reason being is because they're all the devil. They're not of God. They have nothing to do with God. Jesus commanded us to follow him. He did not command us to follow any mortal man. That's why you hear over and over, you'll hear me relate, is that I never asked you to follow me. I never asked you to subscribe to me. I'm just here, I'm just relaying a message, and I'm telling you what you're missing out on. You know, you then need to go and get with God yourself. I'm just laying out and telling you, hey, look, here's what I experienced Here's the blessings I now have in my life. You can now have them in yours if you would just do the same exact thing. And uh, that's where the problem lies is that, you know, a lot of people, they're just following false teachings, false preachers, false religions. And um, understand this much. Jesus was God in the flesh. He commanded you to follow him. He did not command you. He's alive. Jesus is alive and risen. If you believe, if you repent, if you search for him with all your heart, then you'll be able to hear him. You'll be able to listen to him. His spirit will now dwell inside of you. So uh, I'm going to give you a scripture that's basically telling you as much. In Jeremiah 29, 13, he says, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. In John 16, 5, 7, he you know, now, now, I had somebody recently say to me, you know, like that they had wished that they were alive, you know, around when Jesus was alive. And I, and I said to them, I was like, why? You know, because they were basically thinking it, I guess it would have been easier for them to believe. And it's like right there, it proved that they're not really grasping what scripture's relating because, you know, I'm going to read a verse to you where Jesus said, look, it's better for you for me to go away. You know, think about it. The apostles only got to be near him when he was actually, when they were close by. You know, where when you have the Spirit, he's always with you, 24 hours of the day. You know, so that's why it was to your advantage for him to go away. And, and I'm going to give you that verse. It's in John 16, 5 to 7. It says, but now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. 
And then in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, Paul related, or do you not know that your body is a temple, the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? So he's telling you, look, I'm alive. You know, if, if you search for me with all your heart, I'll come and I'll dwell inside of you. You then will be able to discern the voice of Jesus. You'll be able to hear his voice if you truly possess his Holy Spirit. I'm telling you right now, you've got billions of people in this world that claim to be Christian. Guess what? They're not. They don't even possess God's Holy Spirit. They don't even know what it is to have the Holy Spirit. They're all sitting there saying, oh, I'm born again. I'm a Christian. I have the Holy Spirit. Guess what? The truth of the matter is they do not. Because guess what? If they did, then they would have the same blessings that I have in my life. And that's what you're missing out on because you're following all the wrong things. You're believing all the wrong things. You're chasing after all the wrong things. So, you know, I made a note here. I was like, many tend to overlook the obvious in Scripture, and especially the Scriptures that, you know, where they basically state that we have to make changes and sacrifices. Guess what? A lot of people don't want to make those changes and sacrifices. We are all uh, physical and spiritual beings, you know, so we, we have bodies, we have this spirit that dwells inside of us. So you, the choices you're making in your life is based on what spirit is actually guiding you and, and I guess you could say swaying you in your thoughts. You got to realize that the bulk of you are, you don't possess God's Holy Spirit, you possess a demon spirit. You're listening to the devil. The devil is the one who's in there swaying you through your thoughts and through your actions and everything else. You, you don't know the word of God. So understand this much, that the devil's a fallen angel, you know, and he knows the word of God. And if you're not thoroughly grounded in the word of God, then the devil's going to use your lack of knowledge against you. He's going to talk you into believing things that just aren't true. He's going to sway you into doing things that are wrong in the eyes of God. I, I, you know, a prime example, you know, I've explained this time and time again, is take like where a homosexual is concerned. You know, they weren't born that way. What is happening is that there's a demon spirit inside of them that's urging to lust after another man. Then they're listening to the nonsense of this world that's saying, oh, it's normal, you know, you can't do anything about it and things like that. And they're giving in to it. They don't realize that if they would turn to God, if they would fight those urges, if they would resist the devil, then he would flee. And, and that's what so many of you are missing. So I'll give you another couple. You know, as I go along on these things, I made some notes and then I'm going to give the scriptures that are backing up what I'm trying to tell you. So... In Hosea 4, 6, God said, my people were destroyed for lack of knowledge. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, God said, now, now may the God, Paul said, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So first off, what does sanctify mean, okay? Sanctify means set apart and made holy, free from sin, purified. What does blameless mean? Innocent of wrongdoing. So now think of this. I'm constantly attacked by these goofballs online, these people that prove that they don't know God in the least, that they don't possess God's Holy Spirit, because they're out there constantly sitting there saying, oh, it's impossible to stop sinning. We can't stop sinning. Jesus did it all for us. You know, we're just continuing in the life the way that we are. They prove that they have no idea what the word of God is relating. They prove that they don't possess God's Holy Spirit. They prove that they're simply children of the devil who are lost and deceived. And that's it. You know, I have a lot of people that, you know, uh, <laughs> some of the comments some people said to me is like, uh, you know, uh, when people see my videos and that, they, they relate that, you know, I intimidate them, I stress them out and stuff like that. Yeah, why do you think that is? It's because I'm relating something that they don't believe, that they don't have in their own life. And so they're, they're going to try to do everything to try to say that what I'm relating is wrong in order to make themselves feel better. You know, all they're doing is spouting lies and everything in order to, you know, justify why they have sin in their life. 
why they have sicknesses in their life, why they're believing lies and not truth. So that's what you have to realize is that, you know, this whole world, people are just following lies. They're not following the truth. They're following lies from other people. They're not listening to God. So, okay. Uh, next thing I want to talk about. So realize scripture relates to very few people are going to be saved. So why is that? Why is scripture relating that very few people are going to be saved? It's because the majority of people out there, you're believing in all the wrong things. You're claiming to be Christian, but you, you don't even understand the first thing about being Christian. You just, you don't understand what the word of God is telling to you to do. You know, the, the word of God was basically an instruction manual on how we are to live our life in this world. We're supposed to learn to live by the Spirit of God and to be overcomers and not allow the evils of this world to bring us down, to bring tragedy, misery, and so forth into our life. But this isn't occurring in most people's lives because you're living a lie. You're believing in all the wrong things. So if you're out there and you're saying, oh, I believe in Jesus, guess what? That, that, that proves nothing. That means nothing. If you really believe then your words, your actions, and everything are going to line up with the Word of God. You're going to live your life exactly the way the Word of God relates. And that's the problem. You know, if you're someone that's sitting there and saying, oh, you know, I can't stop sinning, guess what? That doesn't line up with the Word of God. You have no idea what the Word of God's relating. You're taking a scripture like uh, a Romans 7, you know, where Paul stated, and, and you're, you're basically twisting what Paul is relating to you. You have no idea. You didn't, you're not comprehending what Paul related in Romans 6 or Romans 8. You're just taking what he related in Romans 7. You know, Paul was sitting there trying to tell you, look, you know, in my old life, I was a slave to sin. I followed what sin told me to do. And then, you know, in Romans 7, he's sitting there saying, oh, man, you know, what am I going to do with this wretched body? How, you know, who's going to save me? And then that's where he talks about in Romans 8. It's like, look, the Spirit of God has now led me to where I'm no longer a slave to sin. I now live by the Spirit. So those of you that, you know, were thinking that you can't stop sinning, you prove that you belong to the devil. You prove that you have no idea who God is or what his word is relating. You are living a lie. You know, realize this much. God is spirit and his words are spirit. And you need to learn how to live by the spirit. You know, here, here's another thing. So many of you don't even understand what blaspheming the Spirit even means. Many of you, for example, like I have people at con times will contact me and they'll try to say that I'm wrong and stuff like that. I go right out and, and I brush these people off. I, I don't listen to them because I, I know the blessings I have in my life. I'm living a life where I, I hear God every day. He, directs me and what to do, tells me what to do. He's protecting me. I never get sick. I, I, you know, I'm almost a month shy of 69. I don't spend a penny on health care, doctors, insurance, or anything. I, you know, I can put 30-year-olds to shame and everything else and so forth. I'm active, healthy, you know, uh, and good shape you know guess what i go to these grocery stores and I, I look at the people my age around me they're all hobbling they're standing in the uh, pharmacy lines for prescriptions and everything else you know they're running to doctors left and right i don't have any of that in my life so if, if that's your god then go take your god i got my god who's an overcoming powerful loving god clearly your god wants to see you sick so you know, to understand, and I'll get into this further. If I come up to you, think of the message that I'm relating to you. I'm sitting here and I'm telling you that it's possible to hear the voice of God and, to allow, and that he will guide you in your life. I'm telling you that it's possible to reach a place where you no longer sin. I'm telling you that it's possible to reach a place where you'll never have sickness, disease in your life, that when it's your time to depart this earth, 
God's going to tell you, hey, get your things in order. I'm going to be taking you out of here, and then you're just going to pass in your sleep or something like that. That's it. You're not going to die of sickness, tragedy, or any of the other things that are fallen, you know, the wicked people of this world. They're not going to fall upon you. Can't happen because it's God's word, you know, and, it, and, it, and that's, that's what you're missing out on. You're all believing in lies. So now if I come up and I relate this to you, you should be rejoicing. You know, the gospel, it's what it's called, the good news gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, what he did for us, what he provided for us. When I, I was living a lie, I got sick. Then when somebody led me to the truth, and I read the truth, and I started reading these things and seeing these things for myself, I, I, there was like this rejoicing in my heart. I, I started crying tears of joy because I had never heard these things before. If you have a good heart, that's what should be happening where you are concerned. If you don't possess a good heart, guess what? You're going to doubt it. You're not going to believe it. And basically, most people just end up rejecting it. You end up rejecting it. Guess what? You blaspheme the spirit. You've condemned your soul. Why? Because you wouldn't accept the blessing that Jesus provided for all of mankind. Jesus restored what we lost in the Garden of Eden, and you're basically sitting there saying, oh, that's not possible. No, that's not true. Well, maybe you ought to read, I think it's in Mark 9, 23, where he says, all things are possible to the one who believes. So if you don't believe it's possible, you just proved you don't believe. You're an unbeliever. You don't know God. So I want to give you some scriptures now that will back up this area of what I just talked about. So... Uh, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. That was John 6, 63, John 4, 23 to 24. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Matthew 4, 4, but Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Isaiah 9, 27, Isaiah cries out concerning Israel, though the number of sons of Israel be like the sand of the sea, only a remnant will be saved. Matthew 7, 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many wonder works in your names? And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Revelation 21, 7, 8. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. 1 Peter 4, 17 to 18. For it is the time for judgment to begin with God's household. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So, you know, he's telling you right there, look, you know, in all these verses, you got to learn how to be righteous. you got to learn how to follow the word of God. You have to learn how not to sin, to overcome sin. But guess what? The majority of these people, they, you know, I get so many, and I see especially this younger generation, they, they want to claim that all they got to do is say they believe in Jesus. You'll hear this once saved, always saved nonsense or saved by grace nonsense and stuff like that, that all they got to do is say that and they're saved. There's, there's nothing else they need to do because Jesus did it all. In other words, they're, they're basically saying, you know, they're trying to say that if you follow any of the, like, Old Testament commands, then you're, that's a work salvation gospel. You're, you're, not, you're not living by, you know, faith in Jesus. I mean, these people are so screwed up, they prove that they have no idea what the Word of God is relating. So... Another thing you have to understand is that, you know, I want to lay some truths and give you some truths. So they are, first, God never lies. God never changes. He's the same always. 
God shows no favoritism, no partiality. So whatever applied for someone in the past applies to everyone today. God shows no favor to it in the least. So whatever he did for Moses, whatever he did for anybody, he'll do for you. That's how God works. He never changes. He's the same. So a lot of the commands that he gave us in the old covenant, they still apply today. You know, where some people are thinking, nah, these don't apply. Well, guess what? They do. Yes, there are a lot of commands that no longer apply, and I'll get into that a little later. But there's tons of commands that still apply today that you still have to live by, that you still have to follow. And anybody that's trying to tell you, no, all you got to do is say, I believe in Jesus, you know, and I'm saved. They're, they're just full of nonsense. They have no idea what they're even talking about and so forth there. So um, uh, here's another thing that I, I get that uh, people uh, just show how clueless they actually, actually are. Realize this much. If you're a true believer, and as scripture relates, you're, you're now an heir of God. You're now an heir, a descendant of Abraham. You're now a descendant of Jesus. That means that you are now a Jew. So if you're just thinking that the Jewish, like say the people in Israel, they're the Jews. No, it's every Christian, every true believer is a Jew. Every Christian is a child of Israel. Why? Because you're a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob is Israel, changed to Israel. That means you're a son of Israel. So whatever, when, you, when things are talking about in the Old Covenant where they're talking about Israelites, that certain things still apply to you if you are a child of Israel. So that's what so many are missing. God never changes. So I'm going to read some scriptures now that will back these things up. Galatians 3, 7. Understand then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. Galatians 3, 26, 29. For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of us who were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Malachi 3, 6. For I am the Lord. I do not change. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son a man that he should repent. Has he said and will not do, or has he spoken and will not make it good? Romans 2, 11, 9, uh, I'm sorry, Romans 2, 11, for there is no partiality with God. Deuteronomy 10, 17, For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality nor takes a bribe. So that's what so many of you are missing. You know, I, I try to tell people, like, read like a, a Joshua, I, I, I'm trying to think, I think it's Joshua 14 about Caleb. You know, in there, Caleb talks about how he followed God wholeheartedly. And because he followed God hard heartily, here he was now, he was 85 years old, yet he still present, you know, possessed the same strength in everything as when he was 40. In other words, he was still, could, as he said, I could still go into battle and out as I did when I was 40 years old, you know, because I believed God wholeheartedly. I followed what God's relating. Well, that's the same blessings that's available to you. You'll never have these in your life if you don't believe them, though. That's the problem. People just don't believe that uh, so many of you are just doubting the power of God. You don't believe in the word of God. You don't apply it to your life. That's why you don't have it in your life. That's why you're not experiencing it in your life. Uh, as I said, many, you know, most are looking for an easy way out. You know, if, if you're going to follow God, you're going to find that it, it's, a, it's a hard journey because we're all born sinners. We're all born children of the devil. We now have to learn how to become a child of God. We have to learn how to overcome our sinful nature. We do, we, the only way you can do that is by possessing God's Holy Spirit. So think about this. Anytime someone sits there and tries to say, oh man, it's impossible for us to stop sinning. 
I don't even listen to them. I throw up because they're just, as I say, they're a child of the devil that has no idea what the word of God is relating. They're living a lie. They're proving that the devil's got control of their life and they don't possess God's Holy Spirit. So think about this. Why, why would I ever, ever listen to a person like that? They have no idea who God is. They're living a lie. They, they don't understand in the least. They have no clue who God is or what his word is relating. Now, as I said, since they're looking for an easy way out, they, as they try to twist to where it's like, well, you know, I no longer have to do certain things. They no longer apply because then I'm just following the law. That's a lie. There's still commands that we still have to follow. Here's the thing. How do you know which commands still apply and which commands don't? Guess what? You can go and you, you listen to a million preachers and everything else, and guess what you're going to find? They're all over the place. They, you know, some will say, oh, well, this still applies. Others say, no, this one doesn't. And, and they'll go back and forth. This is why you need to be able to hear from God. You need to be able to hear the voice of Jesus because you can now go to him with all your questions. You can ask him and he will answer these. He will tell you what applies, what doesn't apply. So if you don't have this blessing in your life, you're just like everybody in this world, the majority in this world who are going to perish. You're just following nonsense that other people are relating to you. You're listening to the lies and the nonsense of other people instead of hearing it directly from God yourself. You have the ability to hear these things. So, you know, I, I gave in like the one video example of like things, like one of the things that apply, you know, the Ten Commandments, for example, still apply. Uh, something that doesn't apply is, is the sacrifices, the temple sacrifices. They no longer apply because Jesus was the atonement for our sins. You know, and, you know, these people that basically try to claim that, you know, like, like the certain laws and commands no longer apply, they, they, they totally overlook what Jesus related. And I'm going to, I'm going to read this scripture to you. This is in Matthew 5, 17 to 20. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. So think about this. What he's telling you is that anybody sitting there telling you, oh, no, this law doesn't apply anymore, so forth. He's telling you they're, they're, they're done. They're, they're never going to get into the kingdom of heaven. It's never going to happen. Because, as I say, they're, they're telling you lies. They're, 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 they're feeding you, you know, other nonsense. So... How you begin, you have to get to the place to where you truly desire to have God in your life, where God is now the most important thing in your life. He's got to be more important than anything, anyone. God's got to be number one. That means over family, mother, father, brother, sisters, children, whatever, over any possessions you have, whatever in your life. God's got to be the most important thing in your life. If you're not desiring that, if you're not putting God's first, you're never going to possess his spirit. You're never going to have it in your life because God's not number one. God's got to be one. He's got to be the most important thing. If he's not, you don't have it. You're living a lie. You have no idea what you're believing and you're following all the wrong things. You just as I say. So then you have to, as, as the scripture tells you, you have to repent. You know, I, I'm, and I'm going to go into this guy a little bit more later, but like this no-nonsense Christianity guy or so forth and his crazy people that follow him, uh, you know, they're, they're out there trying to claim that, you know, repent doesn't mean to turn from sins. You know, he likes to say, well, there's nowhere in scripture where it says repent of your sins, you know, that this guy is 
as wacko as you get and everything else. Yeah, there's no scripture that says those exact words because repent means to turn from sin, to turn from God. So anybody in their right mind would know that when you say repent, it means to repent of your sins, to turn from your sins. So this guy wants you to believe that it just means that all you got to do is say you believe in God. So it just shows you just how crazy he is and everything else in that arena. So you got to reach a place where in your heart you sit there and you're going to God and you're saying, Lord, I'm a sinner. I, I know that I'm a sinner. And I want to start living the holy, righteous life that you commanded us to live. And that is exactly correct. God commanded us to live a holy and righteous life. Now think about it. God would not command us to do something that we're not capable of doing. So if God commanded us to be holy, then guess what? That means it's possible for us to live a holy life. That, you know, before I get into certain scriptures, I, I want to read to you the definition of holy because, you know, where these people sit there and say, oh, well, I can't stop sinning. We're always going to sin. Okay. Holy means spiritually perfect or pure, untainted by evil or sin, sinless, saintly. Consecrate means to make something holy, sacred, dedicated to or set apart. So now, those out there that's saying it's impossible to stop sinning, they're basically calling God a liar, you know, because God commanded us to be holy, which means that it's possible for us to be holy. Okay, 1 Peter 1, 13 to 16. Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that was brought to you on the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your inner former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Leviticus 19, 1, 2, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel, and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. So as he said, the people of Israel. If you're a believer, then guess what? You're a person of Israel. You're a child of Israel. Leviticus 11:44. For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore consecrate, consecrate yourselves, and you shall be holy, for I am holy. Hebrews 12, 14, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So he's telling you right there that if you don't live a holy life, you're never going to see the Lord. You're never going to make it into heaven. Only the righteous, as I said, as you, I read you the, the, the Peter scripture reader, it's the righteous that are going to enter heaven. If you're not living righteously, you're never going to get into heaven. Because you don't believe the truth. You're an unbeliever. So you could sit there and claim you believe, believe in Jesus all you want, but you're living a lie. You don't know what it is. That means you have to, if you believe, you're going to live, your, your life is going to show that you believe because you're, you're going to live a holy and righteous life. You're going to do everything God has asked you to do. You're going to, okay, I'll, I'll use me for example. You know, is it my desire to do these videos and that? No. I do them because this is what God's asking me to do. You know, when God had me quit my job over 10 years ago or so forth, I thought he was going to be leading me to another job. Little did I know this was going to be the job that he was leading me to. You know, I was thinking, okay, well, you know, he's going to take me into a different field, a different thing and stuff like that. No, this is, this is the field he took me into. I was now going to be a messenger for him. So... Uh, I'll give you one more scripture. This is 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 to 8. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionless lust like the pagans who do not know God, and that in this matter no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or sister. The Lord will punish all those who commit such sins as we have told you and warned you before. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being, but God, the very God who gives you his Holy Spirit. So think about it now. So I'm telling you that if, if, if you're a child of God, you're, you're going to live a holy life. You're going to follow God. Yet think about it. Look at uh, the comments that people make and, and so forth where I'm concerned. They're, they're constantly out there 
they're trying to say, oh, it's impossible to stop sinning. Oh, we can never stop sinning. He's one of these sinless perfectionist nut cases. This guy's mental, delusional, and all this. This is the kind of nonsense you get. You got to realize they're no different than the Pharisees, how the Pharisees talked about Jesus. And that's the same kind of nonsense that I get because these are people that are just, they don't know God in the least. They're being controlled by the devil. The devil's the one that's guiding their lives. They're condemned souls that are going to perish for all eternity. They're all living a lie. And so what they're going to do, they're going to try to do everything they can to, to say that what I'm relating is wrong and stuff like that in order to ease their conscience because their hearts are convicting them. They know that in their heart, that as I say, that if what I'm relating is right, then what they're believing is wrong. That means they're condemned. They're, as I say, they're, they're going to spend their eternity in hell. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. So... So now let's move, let's see. As I said, so how do you become holy? You know, you know, someone had asked me that question. Well, you have to reach the place where God is the most important thing in your life. That, that knowing him now is more important than anything else. I'll use my life for an example. I was sick in my old life. I then went searching for God with all my heart. I went searching for his truth. When I heard the scripture, by his stripes, you were healed, I believed it. I was like, whoa, I had never, my Catholic religion never taught anything like that. They filled, you know, I was raised in Catholic grade schools, high schools. They filled my head with other nonsense, to be honest with you. So I was living in a lie for 57 years of my life. My sickness actually opened my eyes, you know, and it, it had me turn to God. And I went searching for God. I went searching for his truth, and I found his truth. I found how to hear him. I found how to talk to him. I found how to listen to him and allow him to guide me in my life. He then taught me how to live a holy and righteous life. I went to him. I admitted that I'm a sinner. Lord, I'm a sinner. You know, I repent of my sins. You have to reach the place where you truly desire to never sin ever again, that you're willing to make changes in your life. You know, some people, and I'm, I'm going to get into some of these comments a little later and so forth, you know, they, they act like I'm a completely different person than I was in my old life. No, I'm, I'm the same guy. I just, you know, I have the same desires. I like fast cars. I've had, you know, like five Corvettes in my lifetime. I, I, you know, I, I loved casinos, I loved horse racing, sports, stuff like that. I still have those desires. I just don't do them because they don't mean the same thing to me anymore. It's just, I, I know it's no longer important to me. God is important to me, not, you know, not this life in this world. I just, you know, but I just, as I say, it's like, I. You know, my wife and I, every, we found that every time we try to do something from our old lives, like, I guess you could say, like, relive it, maybe like reminisce, and then we go to, like, revisit, we find it's never the same anymore. You know, we, we sit there, and I was like, wow, it just doesn't do what it used to do for me anymore. Because it's, I got something better now. I got something, you know, I got something that very few people in this world are ever going to experience. I'm telling you right now that it's possible for you to live a life where, sickness can't touch you where you can sit here and you'll watch all these people get sick go to doctors die of tragedies and everything else and so forth it's not going to touch you because you got god and i'm going to get into some of these things a little bit more detail but okay so if you truly desire to know god you're willing to now turn to him you're now willing to live the holy right as i say you have to truly repent you can't, it's not, repentance isn't like this Catholic religion nonsense. You know, when I was in a Catholic, here's, you know, they basically, I think they call it reconciliation today or whatever, but basically you would go to a confessional booth, say, you know, confess your sins to this priest. He'd be sitting there going, well, you got to do your contrition. He'd give you like 10 Hail Marys, five Our Fathers or something like that and so forth. And then basically, you know, you just go out, live your life, you end up sinning again, you go back to him, and, and you know, it's the same routine over and over and over and over. That's not repentance. That has nothing to do with it. it. 
you got to genuinely repent. you got to get to the place in your heart where you're not going to sin. You're just not. You know, sinning is a choice. Everything in this life is a choice. So if you're sinning, you're choosing to sin. So all those people that sit there and say, wow, it's impossible for us to stop sinning, they're just proving that they are being guided by the devil and they're choosing to live to continue in a life of sin. They're just trying to look for an easy way out and it's all a lie. They're just condemn children of the devil. And, you know, anytime somebody like that's trying to reach out to me, I, I don't waste my time on them. And, you know, you know, I get so many of them trying to write me, telling me, oh, man, well, you're wrong in this and that. And I'm like, just get away from me, child of Satan. You have no idea what you're even talking about. Do, do you honestly think I'm going to listen to somebody who's sitting there trying to say, oh, we can't stop sinning? That They just prove they have no idea who God is or what his words relating. Anyway, I, I'm going to read you now. I got a couple different definitions of repent. And uh, in Marion Webster, it's saying to turn from sin and dedicated oneself to the amendment of one's life, to feel regret or contrition, to change one's mind. Oxford's dictionary says to feel or express sincere regret about one's wrongdoing or sin. Cambridge Dictionary says to be very sorry for something bad that you have done in the past and wish that you had not done it. So it's telling you, yeah, you, you, repent means that you no longer want to sin. You feel guilty. You want to turn from sin. You want to stop sinning. And that's what the Bible's telling you is, look, you need to turn from sin and turn to God. So now I'm going to give you some description where God is telling us, I mean, not only in the old covenant, but in the new covenant, he's telling us we need to turn from our sin and turn to God. We need to repent. So in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Ezekiel 14, 6, Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord, Repent and turn away from your idols and turn away, and turn away your faces from all your abominations. Ezekiel 33, 11, say to them, as I live, declares the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? Proverbs 28, 13, for he who covers his sins will not prosper, but for whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. That was Isaiah 55, 7. I wanted to make a note. Those two scriptures use the term forsake. And I wanted to give you now the forsake definition. It means to abandon, to give up, to renounce, to turn away entirely, desert, to quit or leave entirely. So he's telling you, look, you you got to give these things up. You got to turn from sin. You got to be willing to stop sinning. So, in the new covenant, you have Luke thirteen one five, where Jesus said there were some present at that very time who told him about the Galileans who blood had, whose blood pollen had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. For those 18 on whom the tower in Solomon fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will also likewise perish. Acts 2, 38. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts 3, 19, 20, Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, that it may send the Christ who appointed you. Then, a good one to read, I pointed this one out, I'm not going to read it because it's kind of lengthy, is Ezekiel 18, 20 to 32, where God talks about, you know, look, if my wicked one turns from his sins and starts living righteously, then he'll live. If a person who's living righteously now turns to his wicked ways, then he will die. 
that scripture alone shoots down all these once saved, always saved nutcases, you know, because they're sitting there going, oh, you know, I believe in Jesus, now I'm saved forever. I can't lose my salvation. Yeah, well, guess what? You know, Judas lost his. He, he lived righteously. Then he turned to wickedness. They can still turn to wickedness as well. The only person who's not going to be able to lose their salvation is someone who's allowed the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ to sanctify their soul. I, for example, will never lose my salvation because I went through God's purification process. I allowed God to change my heart, to purify my heart. If you haven't allowed that to occur in your life, guess what? You can still lose your salvation then. Because if you haven't allowed God to sanctify your heart, then guess what? You know, you, you're, you could still fall away. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. So, as I said, many you know, claim that all they got to do is believe in Jesus and they're saved. Well, think about it. You know, if that's all that's required, then why are we told over and over that we need to turn from our sins and repent? You know, why, why even put that? Why not just say, that? well, all we got to do is believe and we're saved? No, because, see, they just want an easy way out. That's all people are looking for is just an easy way out. They don't want to make the changes that God is asking them, them to make. So, again, now I want to talk about, you know, okay, so what are you doing? You have to desire, after you repent, you now have to make it that you're no longer going to sin, that you're going to do everything that God's asking you to do. So you now want to spend time in prayer every day. You want to read scripture every day. It doesn't mean you have to spend your whole day doing this. You know, I tell most people you should at least dedicate like an hour, to, a, a half an hour to an hour every day to God. So you have to make it. You know, this world is a crazy world. It's a busy world and everything else. But you've got to make the time for God every day. So you got to, you have to set apart a time to where you're going to follow God, where you're going to allow God. That's how you're going to grow, by spending time with God in prayer and by reading Scripture. It's not going to these churches and everything else. These churches are all lies. You're just following some other mortal man. You know, you go on the internet and there's tons of people, you know, preaching and they have no idea. They're filling your head with nonsense and lies. They don't know God. They're leading you astray. That's why God has me doing these videos to try to tell you, look, you don't need me. You, you don't need them. You have the ability to go directly to God. So... Um, I've lost my place here, got to find it. All right, so now you now have to get to where you learn how to stop sinning, where you're allowing God to guide you in your life. This is never going to occur unless you can actually hear the voice of Jesus. You have to reach the place, and I'll get that a little further, where you allow Jesus to guide you and teach you. You can go to him with all your questions, and he's going to answer them for you. So where God's telling us that we need to stop sinning, in 1 John 3, 4 to 9, he says, Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him or known him. Now think of that, those verses right there. So think of all these people that are trying to sit there and say, oh, we can't stop sinning. So that scripture right there is saying, whoever abides in him does not sin. So that means whoever knows him doesn't sin. Whoever doesn't know him sins. They've never seen him. They've never known him. So all those people that are saying, oh, we can't stop sinning, they're proven. They don't know God. They've never seen God. They don't know anything about God. They're all just liars. So then it says, little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. Again, if you're living righteously, you're going to do it in all your actions, words, and everything else and so forth there. If you're sinning, then you are of the devil. So, again, 
Anybody that comes to me and tries to say, oh, it's impossible for us to stop sinning. Do you honestly think that I'm going to give you the time of day? I'm going to sit here and say, get lost, moron. You have no idea who the God is. You're just a child of the devil living lies. And believe me, I, I, over and over, I am, you know, messaged by people trying to tell me, oh, I'm wrong, that they can't stop. We're always going to sin and everything else. I just call them what they are. I'm just like, you're a child of the devil. Get lost. Do you have And then they're completely offended because, you know, they sit there and say, oh, you just sinned by calling me a child of the devil. That's how clueless these people are. No, I actually just spoke the truth that you're a child of the devil. That's all it is. I didn't sin by speaking the truth. If you're somebody that's still living in sin, you are certainly a child of the devil. No ands, ifs, or buts about, and the scriptures back it up. I'll go on, and it says, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. He's telling you, okay, all, like, I get so many people that are trying to say they're a born-again Christian. Well, first off, you have no idea what it means to be born again. If you still can sin, you're not born again. You haven't allowed Jesus to sanctify your heart. You haven't allowed the, his Holy Spirit to change you, to transform you into a child of God. So you have no idea who God is. You are living a lie. Because as it says right there, anybody born of God doesn't sin. I no longer sin. I follow God. Do you honestly think I'm listening to God up here inside of me? I listen to him in my thoughts. He guides me. He tells me what to do. He tells me where to go and things like that and everything else. I follow him. Now, do you honestly think that Jesus is going to lead me into sin? No, Jesus doesn't sin. So if you're somebody that's sitting there saying, oh, we can't stop sinning, you just prove that you don't have Jesus in your life. The only person in your life is the devil. That's who's guiding your life. It's not Jesus. So I go on, and um, in 1 John 5, 18, we know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who was born of God keeps them safe, and the evil one cannot harm them. In other words, he's saying, look, if you are born of God and you're no longer sinning, the devil can no longer touch you. What you got to understand is sickness comes from sin and the devil. So if you have sickness in your life, that means you got the devil in your life, that you don't have God in your life. That's what the scriptures are relating, and I'm going to prove that to you down further on. You're living a lie. You're believing a lie. If, if, if you've got sickness, then guess what? You're disobeying God. It proves that you don't know God. You have no idea who God is. Uh, 1 John 1, 8 to 10. This is one that the children of the devil love to twist galore. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Nowhere does that scripture ever say, so many, I get so many people saying that that scripture is saying that, it, that we're always going to continue to sin. That scripture says no such thing. This is how clueless these people are. This is how deceived their minds actually are. They can't even take the obvious and see what it's actually saying. It's saying if we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. We're all born in sin. Every one of us is born in sin. Every child, whatever, we all had sin in our life one time or another. He's telling you if you confess your sins, he will forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness that we were living. And then it says, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. So in other words, he's saying, like, if you're somebody, and, and I, use, I like to use this example because he's somebody that's actually done it, a Donald Trump that sits there and has said, I've never sinned, he's a liar. You know, and that, that's what the scripture's saying. If you're saying you've never sinned, well, Donald Trump's saying he's never sinned. Well, guess what? I'm not saying I've never sinned. I said I used to sin, but I no longer sin because now I've confessed, I've repented, I've now allowed God's Spirit to control my life. But I'm not sitting here saying that, oh, I'm going to continue in sin forever and everything else. <sighs> People are just, you know, anyway, um, in John 5, 13 to 14, it says, but the one who was healed and did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus found in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. That scripture 
says it all, and yet people cannot even see it. They're so blinded by that. Jesus right there alone told you that it was the man, that the man's sins is what was bringing the sickness into his life and that he healed him, but if he still turned back to his sins, then something worse was going to come upon him than what it did before, than what he had before. So this is where so many other people don't understand. You know, Jesus miraculously healed a lot of people. But guess what? A lot of those people just ended up getting sick all over again. Why? Because they didn't turn from their sin. You know, if you know how to talk to God, you're going to find that a lot of the people that wanted to see Joseph crucified were people that he actually miraculously healed. Why? You know, they got healed, but then they didn't listen to what God was trying to tell them. They needed to turn from their sin, and they just ended up sinning all over again. Their sickness came back, so of course then they just considered Jesus, you know, like a false prophet and everything else in that regard. And that's why they were part of the crowd that wanted to see him crucified. So uh, another scripture that you might want to read is Mark 2, 3 to 12. Because, you know, it talks about the paralytic and where Jesus is talking about, you know, arise, take up your bed and walk. Uh, you know, he, he said to the man, your sins are forgiven, take up your bed and walk. And, you know, they're basically saying, you know, who's this guy? He's blaspheming. And Jesus said, look, I have the power to, to show that I have the power to forgive sins here on earth. He's like, pick up your bed and walk. So then the man was able to walk. What that scripture is telling you, it was the man's sins that made him paralyzed. Jesus then forgave his sins. Now the man could walk. So, you know, God's telling you that it's your sin that is bringing these sicknesses into your life. So if you learn to obey him, then you will not have sickness in your life. So I'm now going to give you some scriptures to where, you know, God's telling you, look, he's hiding his face from anybody who sins. This is, you, you can claim to know him all you want, but if you have sin in your life, you don't know God. He, he's not present in your life. That's why you don't have what I have in my life. These are these scriptures. This is Isaiah 59, 1 to 2. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor is ear too dull to hear, but your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Isaiah 64, 7, no one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have given us over to our sins. Micah 3, 4, then they will cry to the Lord, but he will not hear them. He will hide his face from them at that time because they have done evil in their deeds. 1 John 2, 3 to 6, and by this we know that we had come to know him if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word in him, truly the love of God is perfected. By this we know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. I actually have to laugh at this part because under this one no-nonsense Christianity nut cases, I was reading the comments, and uh, there was this one guy that actually said, well, he's, he's talking like he walks the same way that Jesus walks, something along. And I'm sitting here going, yeah, imbecile, because that's what we're supposed to do. I'm allowing Jesus to guide me in my life. If I'm allowing Jesus to guide me, then I'm going to act exactly how Jesus acted. I'm going to do the same things that Jesus has done. I'm going to follow him and guide him and allow him to live through me. So it just... You can't make this stuff up. I mean, these people are so lost. It, it just, it, it's actually comical how deceived they actually are. But this here, he's telling you again. He's like, look, if you're not following God's commands, you're a liar. You don't know God. You don't know a thing about God. If you're not living righteously, if you're, no, you know, if you're still continuing to sin, you, you don't know God. You don't have the slightest idea who God is. You're living a lie. So, all you fools, and I'm at exactly what you are, fools that, like, for example, like follow this uh, no-nonsense guy or so many others that are out there, uh, that Jack Smack 77 and all these other uh, clueless sites that, you know, where these kids are, are, are running to, 
you're you're living a lie. You're you're just as I say, you have no idea who God is. And if you think that I'm going to listen to any of the nonsense you're relating, you got another thing coming. You you don't have the slightest idea who God is or what his word is relating. Now, when you're turning to God and you're willing to do all these things and you're now able to listen to God, he's going to start having you walk away from your old life. You're going to have to learn that he's got to be the most important thing and you're going to have to leave your old life behind. And uh, I'm telling you right now, that is a hard thing for many people to do. There, I, I see firsthand, I've seen many people fall away. I've had many people contact me and they could talk to God and, and they were doing real good. But then once the temptations come and once God starts asking them to do certain things, they cave, they can't do it because they're trying to cling to their old life and they fall away because it turns out they prove that they love this world more than they love God and they end up condemning their soul. They're, they, 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 as I say, they're choosing death over life they, because they're proving their faith. They're proving that they really didn't have faith in God, that he's real. You know, they weren't willing to give up those things. I'm telling you, he had me give up. I've had to walk away from family. I've walked away from wealth. I've walked away from, you know, my company. I was the president of my own company. I, I've told this over and over. It was Baltimore Industrial. Don't believe me. Look it up. I've walked away. I've given away, you know, all my money and everything else. I, I think my net worth at one point was like roughly two and a half million dollars. I basically dispersed all that. Uh, you know, as I say, I've got five brothers and four sisters. I don't even associate with them anymore, as I say, because they wouldn't accept the truth. They wouldn't believe the truth. So this is what you're going to find. And I'm going to read you some of these scriptures, what he's telling you. He's saying in Matthew 10, 34 to 39, do not think that I've come to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. I mean, listen to what that scripture's saying. He's telling you that he's got to be the most important thing in your life over mother, father, sons, daughters, whatever. He's got to be the most important thing. If he's not, then guess what? You're not worthy. You will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You are living a lie. You are believing a lie. You have no idea who God is. Luke 12, 51 to 33 basically says the same thing. Do you think that I've come to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on, there will be five in one family divided against each other. Three against two, two against three, they will be divided. Father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, a daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. This is what happens. If you're somebody that turns to God, he's now going to start changing you. He is now not going to allow anybody who does not believe or accept the truth to sway you in any possible way. So he's going to have you get away from him, you know, because if you know the scripture, as it says, evil company corrupts good habits. That's what happened in like the old, he kept telling the Israelites, he's like, look, don't associate with these tribes and everything else because these tribes then are going to lead you from me. They're going to fill your heads with their nonsense, their lies and their sin, and they're going to lead you astray. So that's what happens. Once you learn how to talk to God, you know, my family, my wife's family and things like that, they, they all try to sit there and say, oh, family comes first. No, it does not. Not if you know God. God is first. Family's not first. So, yeah, if a person, okay, look, it's no different than me. You know, when I, you know, first learned to talk to God and everything else, I went and I told my family. I told them, you know, I'm like, hey, look at the wonderful thing I discovered. They should have all been rejoicing, but guess what? Most of them didn't. 
Same thing with my wife's family and everything else. They basically, they proved what was in their heart. Well, guess what God's going to eventually do? God's going to have you just say, walk away from him. Shake the dust from your feet and move on. Don't, you know, don't, you know. Uh, the one scripture says, he who rejects you rejects me. He who rejects me rejects the one who sent me. And that's what you're going to find. So um, Matthew 16, 24, 25. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Forever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Same thing as being related in Mark 8, 35. Luke 14, 26 says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So like Luke 14, 20, Luke 14, 33, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Listen to those words. They're words from Jesus. The scripture's telling you that you need to obey God and Jesus said you need to follow my truth. These are all things that Jesus told us. He's telling you, if you don't forsake everything in your life, you can't be his disciple. You can't know him. You can't follow him then. So all of you people out there that are trying to claim that you know God, but you're still living in the same life that you've always lived, you prove you don't know God. You're living a lie. You don't know anything about Jesus and so forth. You are just a friend of the world. You want to stay in this world. And I'm now going to give you a scripture that basically tells you that. James 4.4 4 says, You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enemy with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. So if you are putting anything in this world above God, if that's more important to you than knowing God, then guess what? You're going to be condemned. You have no idea who God is. You're living a lie and so forth in that regard. These are all things that you got to be willing to do if you want to make it into heaven, if you truly want to know God. Only the righteous are going to enter the kingdom of God. If you're an unrighteous person, you're not going to enter the kingdom of God. You're living a lie. You don't know who God is. You have to learn how to hear the voice of God. As John, uh, what was it? John 10, 20, yeah, John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. He's telling you right there that if you are a child of God, you will be able to hear his voice. If you cannot hear his voice, then you do not know God. You are not following God. So how can you learn to hear his voice? I have videos about it. I'm not going to get into it here because it's, it's as I said, it's time consuming and everything. But I have videos that talk about how to hear the voice of God, how to discern and test the spirits and so forth there go and spend time there or email me or message me and I'll help you know guide you in that direction but in 1 John 4 1 to 3 beloved do not believe every spirit but test the spirits to see whether they are from God for many false prophets have gone into the world by this you know the spirit of God every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh is of God and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming, is now is in the world. This is talking about testing the spiritual voices inside of you that dwell inside your thoughts and everything else. God is spirit, as I related, and you need to learn how to communicate to him in your thoughts, in your words, in your actions. If you don't know how to do that, then guess what? You don't know God. So then once you learn how to talk to God, you're willing to do whatever God tells you to do, and you're following everything, God's now going to test your face. Just like he tested Abraham where Isaac and so forth was concerned, God's going to test you to see if your faith is genuine. This is where many, many, many people, I have seen many people fall away. Once the testing comes, they prove how they did not really believe. I have seen this, this happened with my sister, happened with my brother. 
Uh, I've seen it with so many other people. They went so far, and then once God tested their faith, they caved, they cracked, they fell away, they condemned their souls. To show you what I'm talking about, this is 1 Peter 1, 6-7. So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed. James 1, 2 to 4. Dear brothers and sisters, when trouble of any kind comes your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Deuteronomy 8 to 2. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40, wheels, 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep my commands. 1 Peter 4 to 12, 1 Peter 4, 12 to 13, Psalms 11, 5, Hebrews 11, 17 to 19. They're all other scriptures that'll talk you about how the Lord's going to test your faith to prove if you really believe or not. If you haven't gone through this temptation process, then guess what? You don't know God. Uh, I'm, and I'm telling you right now, now it is hard it is hard because you're going to have to learn how to take the devil head on i'm going to get into it in a little bit more detail when i talk about some of my family members and things like that and what happened with them and so forth there uh but it's tough yeah because you're you're going to have to learn how to take on all the devil's lies all the devil's deceptions and and it's not fun and if you don't stand strong, then guess what? The devil's going to destroy you. And I've seen the devil do it to many people. And uh, I'm even going to point out one or two of them further as we get along in this video. Now, sickness. Everybody, I, I can't, you know, as I said, you've got people out there that's saying sickness comes from God. You're, you're saying sickness comes from this fallen world. Uh, there, there's so many, you know, different things, what, what people are trying to say, where, why we have sickness in this lifetime. God told us why we have sickness for this lifetime. It's from disobeying him. Okay, that's in Deuteronomy 28, 58 to 61. He's told us this, that, and I'm going to show to you. All right, think about this. If you're somebody that says God is love, Okay, let's, you know, everybody says God is full of love. Okay, now if you're a parent and you love your child, do you want to see your child sick? Is that how you love your child? Are, are you wishing sickness on your child? So think about this logic from people. If God truly loves us, why would he want us sick? Why is there no sickness in heaven? Why would he have sickness here on earth, you know, and not sickness in heaven then in that regard? If God's the same and he's going to treat you the same, why would he want you to be sick in this lifetime? That's what so many of you are not grasping, okay? And, and as I say, if you're a parent, why would you, do you love your child by seeing your child sick? God doesn't want you sick. God wants you healthy. What he's trying to tell you is like, look, if you disobey me, I'm not going to hang around to a person that's not listening to me and who's sinning. I'm going to turn you over. I'm going to let the devil have rule in your life then. If that's what you're choosing, you got to realize God gave us a free will to make these choices. You're choosing what you want to believe. So if you want to choose to believe the lies of this world and the lies that you know these false preachers and everything false religions are filling your head with then god sitting there said go ahead follow them listen to their lies or whatever then and now the devil's going to take over your life and he's going to bring all his afflictions into your life that's that's what's happening that's what you don't understand listen to what he said 
in Deuteronomy 28, 58 to 61, if you do not carefully observe all the words of this law that are written in this book, that you may fear this glorious and awesome name, the Lord your God, then the Lord will bring upon you and your descendants extraordinary plagues, great and prolonged plagues, and serious and prolonged sicknesses. Moreover, he will bring on you all the diseases of Egypt of which you were afraid, and they shall cling to you. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in this book of law will the Lord bring upon you until you are destroyed. Job 36, 8, 11. But if people are bound in chains, held fast by cords of affliction, he tells them what they have done, that they have sinned arrogantly. He makes them listen to correction and commands them to repent of their evil. If they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. That's explaining somebody like me. I was living a lie. I was living in sin. I ended up getting really, really sick. I then turned to God, and as he showed me, he's like, look, it's because your sins, because you weren't doing what I asked you to do while you were sick. So he's like, you now need to allow me to guide you, and you need to follow my commands so you no longer sin, and then I'll take care of you. I'll make you prosper and I'll watch over you and you'll spend your years in pleasure. That's my life. That's my life now. I live my life in God. I have no worries, no fears, no care. I, there's nothing in this world that I'm afraid of. I'm, as I say, it's nothing in this world can touch me. I got God in my life. I'm following God. I hear him. He guides me. He's blessing me. I've seen some pretty amazing things in my life because I listen to a God and I obey him. I, you know, here's, listen to what God said also. Exodus 15, 26. If you diligently heed the voice of your Lord, your God, and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of diseases on you on which I have brought on the Egyptian, for I am the Lord who heals you. Exodus 23, 25 to 26. So you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the numbers of your days. Deuteronomy 7, 15. And the Lord your God will take away from you all sickness and will afflict you with none of the terrible diseases of Egypt which you have known but will lay them on all those who hate you. Well, I'm going to uh, show you uh, just that one there a little bit later with one of these people that's, uh, uh, this, was, this was a person that was able to test the spirits at one time then fell away, and now they're trying to say all these nasty things about me and everything else and so forth. And I, I'm going to show you one of their comments or whatever. So remember that one there how he said i'm going to lay all on those who hate you and i'm going to put these diseases and afflictions on them because of what they're doing so um this is what you don't he's telling you all these scriptures here he's saying look if you obey me then i'm going to protect you i'm not going to allow any sickness to come near you if you do what i'm asking you to do if you don't obey me, then guess what? I'm going to allow sin and the devil to destroy your life. I'm going to allow all his afflictions to bring upon you until you're destroyed. So if you have sickness in your life, any kind of sickness, guess what? You don't know God. And I'll tell you another thing. A cold is not really a sickness. This world is going to tell you that a cold is a sickness. I found out from God, you know what's a cold? You know, this world wants you to believe that a cold is from germs and everything else. There's no such thing as germs. You know, if you look up at the definition of like germs, it's, you know, they're trying to tell you it's this uh, microorganism that, you know, you can't really see or whatever. No, it's not. You know, in other words, it's this invisible boogeyman that's inflicting you with stuff. No, it's your sins that are bringing it into your life. A cold, for example, is brought on by either the devil or it's either brought on by you, let's say, not taking care of your body properly by putting way too much sugar, lack of exercise, stuff like that, wearing yourself down, that's what's gonna end up bringing a cold. That's all it is, it's just, look, our bodies, we still have to take care of our bodies. You know, can I feel pain in my body? Yes, you know, so look at most people 
out there today. They're overweight, they're lazy, they don't exercise or anything like that. If you abuse your body, you're going to feel the consequences of abusing your body by not doing, you know, what you should be doing. So, uh, let's see, uh, lost my place again. So that is what you need to do. You, you know, if you turn to God, you follow his commands, you, you're going to be living the life that I'm living. You're not going to have sickness. As I said, I'm going to be, months time, I'm going to be 69, and I don't spend a penny. I don't spend a penny on health care, doctors, pills, nothing. You know, like this, people say you need vitamins. I don't take any vitamins or any of that kind of junk. I don't need them. It's all a lie. I don't need that stuff or whatever there. I mean, it's just all nonsense of this world. So, but you still have to take care of your body. You know, I still, you know, I exercise, I lift weights. I, you know, I, I do a variety of different things. I do whatever I want. I, that's what you're going to find with God. Age is just a number. Am I getting older? Yeah, there's nothing I can do about that. But it doesn't mean just like, you know, if, if you know the scriptures, Moses lived to 120 years old. His strength never left him. His eyes never dimmed. I told you earlier, like with Caleb, Caleb was 85 years old. He was still just as strong as when he was 40. Well, guess what? That's, you know, I, I, I look now and I, I think of my parents, uh, my wife's parents and where they were at this age. They couldn't do half the things that I'm doing. You know, I'm, you ought to see my lawn and what I'm doing in my yard and stuff like that and all the rocks I carry and everything else and so forth there. My parents could have never done those things. And, and it's the same. They, they weren't living by God. They weren't following God. They believed in God, but they were believing in all the wrong things. They believed in the Catholicism lie. They raised me. They raised my brothers and sisters in this Catholicism lie. And, and that's what I, you know, want to get into now. I mean, I want to start talking about, because I, I had mentioned, I, I have five brothers and four sisters. Uh, they were all still alive until last week. My oldest sister passed away last week, and my brother had written to me about it. Realize this much. I don't, I haven't contacted my brothers and sisters in years. Some of them still write to me and, you know, like one of them wrote to me to tell me about my sister Eleanor and I try to tell them, look, I, what, okay, I know that one or so of them are probably going to be here in this video or whatever, because clearly they have. So here's the thing. You may have been my blood brothers and sisters, but you're not my spiritual family. You don't know God. You've rejected the truth. There's nothing I can do for you anymore. You've turned your back on God. In other words, I related to you what was available. You chose to believe differently. I had two siblings that would believe the truth when I related it. That was my oldest brother, Mick, and my second oldest sister, Pat. Both of them, during the period of testing, both of them eventually fell away. Mick didn't last that long, probably a couple of months. And I can tell you right now, you know, from the things I saw, you know, where Mick wanted to believe certain things, his wife, I, I could see that his wife was going to be a hindrance to him. And yes, can people influence you in what you're believing? Definitely. And the devil's going to use those people against you. So if you're not thoroughly grounded in the word of God, believe me, the devil knows how to exploit it. He knows how to take advantage of you. So my sister Pat lasted about a year. I, my sister Pat tested very, very well. The problem with Pat is when the devil, when she heard God telling her things like give up your pills, things like that. So every time she would do it, the devil then would tempt her with something, which, which, which you do, instead of standing and trying to fight the lies of the devil, she cave and run back to the pills. She kept doing that over and over. You gotta realize that if you're gonna turn to God, God's gonna turn you into 
you know, this person that's bold and confident and everything. That's why I have so many people come to me and say, oh, you're full of pride. What they mistake for pride is actually my boldness and my confidence in my relationship with God. I am completely, let's put it this way. I know without a doubt where my destiny is. I know, I've seen, I'm experiencing so many amazing things that I've got God in my life. That's what you people don't understand. So, you know, if you're somebody that's trying to come to me and tell me that, you know, something I'm relating is wrong, you, you best believe I'm going to be telling you get lost because you have no idea what you're even talking about and so forth. And I am not even going to waste my time on a lost child of the devil because you don't know God, and I, I, I'm just not even going to, to listen to you in, in that arena. Well, I saw firsthand, and I can even tell you the date, it was like December the 3rd of 2014, when my sister cracked. I mean, she basically, God is going to allow you, he's done it with every, he's done it with my wife, he's done it with me, he's done it with others that I know. He's going to have you face all your fears. He's going to show you that there's nothing in this world to be afraid of. You know, as he says, perfect love casts out all fear. He removes all the fear from your life. If your faith isn't there, and if you have fear in your life, and you're, you're not willing to stand in faith and faith those fears, you're, you're going to fall. You're going to fail. Well, that's what happened with my sister, Pat. She basically, God, I mean, and one of the things is the most stupidest thing in the world. My sister was afraid to drive downtown uh, at nighttime. So I think not only was she afraid of going downtown, but she was afraid of driving at night. And God had me invite her to a dinner outing down at a Ruth Chris Steakhouse. I think it was going to be on December the 20th of that year. And I had stopped over her house that night and I was showing her a new car that I had got. And she was like, well, you're going to drive me down to the... And I'm like, that pack, God didn't tell me to drive you. You're driving your... She literally, she was like, God can't expect that of me or whatever. And, you know, she, she went ram... It was almost like she had a nervous breakdown to where she was terrified to drive downtown. She just, she just couldn't face that fear. It, it just, as I say, it just, it just, and she started spouting things that just aren't true where she's saying, well, God, he can't ask me to do this. God made me this way, you know, and I'm sitting there going, Pat, God didn't make you this way. The devil's made you that way. And uh, she just allowed that fear to take over. I then saw after that where it was like she was a different person. I, you know, it, you got to realize as you're growing on your journey with God, you're going to learn more and more and more and more as you're going on. I've been, do, I've been going now with God for like 11 years or so forth. In the beginning, there were things I didn't understand. And then God, as things happen in your life, God's pointing them out and they'll explain it to you what it's all about. Well, when this, after that night, it was like my sister turned to this completely different person. All the things that she knew that she could do, all the things that she knew were truth, it was like they all disappeared. And one of the things I'll use as an example, she had written a letter to my brothers and sisters telling them how wrong the Catholic Church was. I still even have a copy of the letter that she sent out to everybody. She's telling them all how this is wrong, what she learned, all this other kind of stuff. Now, all of a sudden, she's not believing it. She's now believing, she actually ended up going back to the Catholic Church. So, you know, I'm sitting there, you know, she could do the same things that I could do. And, you know, look, when you're somebody that possesses God's spirit, as I say, and I've related this before, you know who believes, who does not believe. You know who's saved, who's not saved. You, you know if somebody's blaspheming the spirit. How do you know all these things? Because you possess the spirit of God. You possess Jesus Christ in your life who knows everything. He knows everybody's heart. So all you got to do, if you can talk to him, all you got to do is ask him. Jesus will tell you. So anybody that sits there and says, well, these things aren't possible, again, there's somebody that don't know God. They're proving they don't believe. They're proving they don't possess his Holy Spirit. Remember, all things are possible to the one who believes. So for somebody to sit there and say, oh, that's not possible to know those things, guess what? You're a child of the devil. You don't know God. You don't have the slightest idea who he is. So anyway, you know, 
I saw the changes in my sister. I saw how she fell away. I saw her then, you know, going for the, you know, for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to God trying, you know, at first I was trying to get my sister Pat back to where she was. I was like, Pat, what the heck happened here or whatever. It was like my sister was brainwashed, you know. Well, then God finally, the one day, God point, pointed me. He's like, he told me, he's like, let her go. And I'm like, Lord, but it's like she's lost. And he's like, you don't understand. She's gone. And I'm like, what are you trying to tell me, Lord? And she's like, she's gone. She's condemned. She'll never, ever get back to where she was. And I'm like, you're telling me my sister's condemned for all. And he's like, yeah. He's like, she knew the truth and she wouldn't accept it. And she turned her back on it and she wouldn't face it. And she's like, she's done. You know, so there's not a chance that she'll ever be saved. And then he took me to the scripture here, and I'm going to read it to you. It's Hebrews 6, 4 to 6. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. To their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. That was my sister. That's what he's telling me. He's like, look, she's done. She she tasted it. She knew that how real I was. She knew what I was asking her to do, but she didn't have the faith to do it. She allowed the devil and his fears to take over, and she quit. As God says, I take no pleasure. I think it's in Hebrew tense. I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. There's no looking back with God. Once you start on this journey, you're either going to move forward or you're, and you're going to learn how to be an overcomer who stands up against anything, or you're going to be basically destroyed. You're going to fall away. You're going to quit. And this is what Jesus is relating in the parable of the sower. And I'll read this scripture. This is Luke 8, 11 to 15. Now the parable of the sower is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, least they should believe and be saved. But the ones on a rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, who believe for a while, and in time of temptation fall away. Now the ones that fell among the thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear it with all fruit. So that is basically what happened. I mean, I've seen it, I can't tell you, time and time and time again. I've had people that come to me. I then direct them. I show them. I'm like, look, this is what you need to do. Go and do it. They then go and do it. You know, when God starts asking them to do some hard things, they cave, they crack. They prove that their faith is not there because they're not willing to stand and faith, their faith is weak. It's not strong. If, if, if you're not completely grounded in the word of God, if you're not totally true that, yeah, I guess you could say, you have no doubts that God is real, that his word is his truth, you're, you're never going to grow with God. You're never going to succeed because the devil's going to take advantage of you. He's going to take advantage of, you know, he, he, he's going to end up destroying you. God's people are overcomers. They're not afraid of anything. They're, they're bold and confident, just like I am. I, as I say, I'll, I'll take on anybody. I'm not afraid of anybody. I, I know that's why it's like, you know, anybody that tries to, like if anybody's doing a video about me or so forth, I'm gonna expose them for who they are. I'm gonna, you know, just like that no nonsense guy, I exposed him for who he is, you know, for, for what he's all about. He, he doesn't know God in the least. He has no idea who God is. You know, the Jack Smack 77 guy, the Sean Christie guy, the Justin Peters guy, they, they don't know God. They, they haven't the slightest idea. You know, Justin Peters trying to sit there and say, like, you know, his cerebral palsy is like a blessing from God. Well, geez, if it's a blessing from God, then, you know, why were you out there trying to get these faith healers to remove it if it's such a wonderful blessing from God? I mean, that just shows you the logic of these people. They have no idea what they're even talking about and so forth in that regard. So, um, I, I now, you know, so... Where my brothers and sisters are concerned, 
I basically, you know, I'll, I'll give you this one scripture here. This is Matthew 10 to 14. If any one will not receive you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet when you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. So now think about this. You know what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah and how they were destroyed. Now, if I would go and I told my brothers and sisters what's available to them, that they could be living a life where they have no sickness, disease, or things like that, you know, where they don't have to worry about these things, and they basically said it's not possible, they didn't want it, they rejected it, in God's eyes they're done. They blasphemed the spirit. There's nothing more that I can do. That's why God would say, just walk away from them. That's why I don't bother with them. I haven't contacted them or so forth. As I said, some of them have contacted me. I've responded accordingly, and then they get all mad and everything out me. But here's the thing. I know for a fact that my brothers and sisters, they, they will never make it into heaven. It's never going to happen. You know, they will all die of some type of sickness, some type of disease or whatever. My sister, Eleanor, I don't know what's what with her, but I know a year or two ago, my sister, Pat, had written to me telling me how my brother, Mick, was struggling and how my sister, Eleanor, had had a couple of strokes and all this other kind of stuff. And, and I told her, I was like, Pat, I, you know, you know, and then they tell me to pray for him and that, you know, like when my sister died, my brother said pray for her. and I'm, I, I told him the truth I'm like look I'm not going to pray for her there's nothing I can do for her my prayers won't do anything for her and I'm certainly not going to go against God you know because why why would I pray for her it's like you're believing this Catholic nonsense that you know it, it, as if my prayers could somehow help my sister get into heaven no my sister's fate's already decided she wouldn't accept the truth so she's now going to answer for it just like all my other brothers and sisters are going to answer for it you're going to find if you know how to talk to god take like funerals or so forth he's not going to have you go to any funerals that's not how a person you're actually disrespecting you know the funerals of the day you know like where they got these coffins and all this other kind of stuff and you got these viewings and so forth you're basically disrespecting that person by doing that you know yes if you're a child of god you're now a jew you basically you a person dies they should be buried before sundown if they can't be buried before sundown then they're buried the very next day that's done none of these funeral stuff this is all just pagan nonsense that things like the catholic religion and everything else started so no, you're never going to find me at one of them. And you're also going to find that if it's a person that did not accept the truth and believe the truth, God is never going to have you attend their burial because that person's dead. As he said, let the dead bury their dead. So yeah, he forbids me from going. So I will never go. I'm never going to go against God. So you can call me crazy, nuts, like all day. I'm, I'm going to read some of these comments from, and I know the woman who wrote it, by the way. So you could claim to be anonymous, but you got to remember I know God. So I know who you are. And uh, so you can say that I'm crazy and nuts and mean and nasty and all that other kind of stuff. No, I'm actually very loving. If I... People don't understand the difference between love and hate, good and evil, and things like that. It's actually out of love that I do these videos, that I, believe me, I'm attacked just like how Jesus, I'm persecuted left and right. I'm called names galore. I'm threatened. I'm, yeah, I got people telling me I'm going to kill you and all this other kind of stuff. I, you know, I, I deal with tons of wackos out there, tons of crazy. Why? Because what I relate convicts them in their heart. It, it dries them. Yeah, it's like the one person said, it's like completely stresses them out. Why? Yeah, because if what I'm relating is correct, then these people know that they're condemned. You know, as I said, I'm sitting here and I'm telling you, look, I never have sickness in my life. You know, if you got sickness in your life, then guess what? You're proving you don't know God. You don't know God, and at least you can claim that 
that you do know God, but you actually don't. You don't know the first thing about him. You have no idea who he is or what his word is relating. You're living a lie. And if you don't change, then guess what? <laughs> You're going to be condemned, just like everybody else. So, no, you know, I'm sure that uh, when my sister, after she fell away, I'm, I'm sure she did, and I'm going to be reading something from someone, some group member's sister, how she's reacted now. And I'm sure that my sister kind of did the same thing with my other brothers and sisters, that once she fell away, she probably then filled their heads with nonsense and lies that just aren't true. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, go into this now. Uh, if you go, it was pointed out to me, uh, to there's a guy, it's, it's called No Christ, no Nonsense Christianity, and this guy's name's David Hofton, I think it's pronounced or spelled. This guy is, he's out there. He's as clueless and weird as you get and everything else. And, you know, he's another one of these, you know, as I said, this guy doesn't even know what repent even means. So uh, he, he's so far gone, it isn't funny. So I did a video exposing him, and then he turned around. I knew he was probably going to do another, because they all do. He did another video. Well, all you got to do is look at this guy's videos and also look at his thumbnails and everything else. That alone proves that he's not Christian in the least. He doesn't even have the slightest idea what it even means to be a Christian. And all you got to do is go to his comment section and read what some of his own followers even related and they they even come out and say is like it, you really shouldn't be doing these things but yet he tries to justify why he's doing them so that alone proves guys not he, he's not even close to being a christian but yet these people are listening to this guy now what usually happens when people try to contact me or try to prove me wrong and I shut them down and say get lost you're a child of the devil things like that they immediately then to make themselves feel better they immediately go searching for somebody that's you know they, they can I guess you could say they can agree with you know they go run into these uh, false preachers or whatever who are trying to you know condemn me and all this other kind of stuff so that's the standard protocol. I'm telling you, if you, if you go to the comment section of these things, all the, a lot of these people are people that have contacted me one way or another. One of them even mentioned that he had contacted me, and I'm going to bring him up too. So uh, it, it's actually comical, to be honest, to see how these people are, you know, because they're, they just... They're, they're such liars, it just, it's just simply amazing. And you gotta realize it's, it's all because they're convicted in here, because they're trying to justify why they still sin. They're trying to justify why they have sickness in their life. They're trying to justify why they can't hear God. So I'm gonna read you a, a couple of these things that, that people have wrote. And, um, the first one I'm going to, you know, first thing I want to read to you. Now, remember, these people do not possess the Holy Spirit. So I want to read you this scripture just to tell you. 1 Corinthians 2.14. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. So they can't comprehend the things I relate because they don't have the Spirit of God. So for me to sit there and say that you can overcome sin, they can't comprehend it because in their minds, they don't have the Spirit of God, they can't stop sinning. So to them, oh, that's, that's foolishness. It's impossible for us to stop sinning. See, because they don't have the Holy Spirit. Think about it, if you have the Holy Spirit, that means you're a person that doesn't sin. So how could you have God's Holy Spirit and still sin? This is how ignorant these people are. Anyway, now, a certain woman that I know thought that, you know, 
I guess because I, the way I responded to my brother, she didn't like the way I responded to my brother. She then ran to one of these sites and then she starts throwing her two cents in. Now realize I knew right off the bat that this person doesn't believe, you know, doesn't believe, she's not religious in the least. And then she even commented that she's not religious in the least. So think about it. This is a person that even comes out and admit they know nothing of God, but yet they're trying to say that I'm the crazy one, right? So listen to what she writes. She puts, I am close to his family and know for a fact that he is mentally ill, okay? His sister just died. His brother contacted Mike on his YouTube channel to tell him, Mike's response, you can read it on his latest video in the comments, she's going to hell because she got sick and therefore didn't worship Christ appropriately. Because if she had, she wouldn't have gotten sick at all. Not, oh no, this is awful, etc. You know the normal loving reaction. But he responds to his brothers with cherry-picked Bible verses condemning his entire uh, family. Okay, first off, I didn't cherry pick, I know the verses. If anybody would be cherry picking, it would be hers because she doesn't have the slightest idea of what the word of God is relating. Oh, and according to him, they're all going to hell. Yes, sister, they're all going to hell. He was wealthy and was brought out of his company because of his twisted religious views. That is not entirely true. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what happened there. Suppose he has given up all his money away and keeps uh, him from getting sick. I'm concerned that it's a matter of time that some type of tragedy will occur. Well, guess what? Not tragedy in my life, but tragedy in yours. The only victims are people that have been manipulated by him and they need to be deprogrammed. His wife looks troubled in his videos. My wife was like going, what the hell is that woman talking about? Or where my wife knows who this is too, by the way. She goes, the fact that he has followers really concerns me. Very Jim Jones, David, Koresh behavior with him. Okay, then she, uh, th th there's people going back and forth and everything, and in another comment she says, he definitely is narcissistic, and in my opin opinion, sociopathic. Uh, he indoctrinates anyone willing to listen to him, and as soon as they disagree with something, then he rages at them and quotes the Bible in order to retain control. When he loses control, he slanders them to everyone that knows them. He literally disowned his entire family because they are Catholic, which he was raised, indoctrinated one member of the family and tried to get them to do the same with the rest. And when that didn't work, he turned on all of them. He needs recruits just like all cults do. Okay. So see what I mean? See how they get? In other words, I'm a cult now and everything else. Okay. Over and over in my videos, I tell people, don't follow me. Have you ever asked me to follow, to subscribe to me or anything? Nope. Have you ever asked me to send, you know, to donate money to me? Nope. You know, you'll never hear me say those things. Yet, I'm a cult. I have this magic power over people and all this other kind of stuff. This is how crazy these people are, and yet they try to say I'm the one with the mental illness. They really need to look in the mirror and everything else. Okay, anyway, go back and uh, in my last video where seven of my brothers and sisters gave their testimony about, you know, what they're experiencing in their life, how they're not following me, how I'm not brainwashing them, how they're all hearing from God. Uh, you know, I, my brother wrote to me to tell me of my sister's death. You know, and he told me to pray for her, and I told him, I'm like, James, look, I'm not going to pray for her. You know, there's nothing I can do for her. She chose her faith, so be it, okay? That's it. I don't wish my brothers and sisters harm. I don't, you know, as I say, I, I, I walked away from them as God instructed me to do. They don't believe the truth. There's nothing I can do for them. So they chose their faith. It's on them. I have nothing to do with them. As I say, th think about this much too. If I'm the one that's mentally ill, why are some of my brothers and sisters still writing to me then? You know, uh, I'm not writing to them. Why are they the ones writing to me? I don't look. You chose your life, live it. And, you know, I, I just want to show you also how this is how this world thinks. So, you know, in her mind, 
I'm supposed to because my sister died. Well, you know, does it bother me? Am I hurt and sad because my sister died? Yeah, I'll admit I am. I, you know, it was sad to hear that news or whatever, but I know it's going to eventually happen with my other brothers and sisters as well. I basically, I guess you could say, prepared myself for it. But they chose that road. It didn't have to, they didn't have to leave this life that way. My sister Eleanor, you know, from what I understand, she may have even, I don't know, I, you know, it said something about the obituary. She was in like, I guess either like some nursing home or something like that. She didn't have to die that way. It didn't have to be that way. She chose that life. That's not, you know, that's her choice, not mine. So if that's what she wanted, then go ahead. The same thing will apply with my other eight siblings. As I told them in, in the message, I'm like, look, that's what you chose. We may have been blood related, but we are not the same spiritual family. And I referenced the scripture where Jesus said, who's my mothers, my brothers, my sisters, and everything else. So, you know, to her, just because I didn't come out and say things like, oh my God, it's awful, my sister died, I'm a mean and nasty person. No, did it, I knew it was gonna happen, does it make me sad? Yeah, my, my heart's sad for it and everything else, but I, I can't do anything. I, hey, look, she made the choice, it's her choice. You know, I'm sorry they did, but they chose it for themselves. They're the ones that's now gonna answer for it. That's their light, just like anybody else. You should be rejoicing at what God has me relating. You should want to live a life where you don't have sickness, tragedy, or anything in your life. If you would believe God and follow him, you would have that kind of life. You only pro prove you don't. You prove that you don't believe. So, yeah, you know, call me mean, nasty, or whatever, and everything else, but... Yeah, I'll give you a verse of scripture just to show, so then, because I didn't say, oh, wow, you know, wow, this is awful that my sister died. She's saying I'm not loving. So I'll give you a verse of scripture that basically will say then, she's basically saying that Jesus wasn't a loving person because, you know, the one person went to him and he said, then he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. Okay, so Jesus didn't say, oh, hey, that's that's really bad or whatever. I'm sorry to hear that or whatever in that regard. So I guess Jesus wasn't loving because he didn't react the way that you're thinking that they should have reacted. So look, my sister lived a long life, you know, but my sister did not choose to live the way that God commanded her to live. She chose to believe in the pagan Catholic religion. The Catholic religion if, is, is all in Revelation. It's talking about the beast, and the Catholic religion is that beast. It has done nothing but spread lies. It is a false religion. It is nothing more than the ho same Holy Roman Empire that crucified Jesus. All they did was talk, you know, spread a pagan cult. So if there's a cult out there, uh, your, uh, let's just say your mother and your father are following that cult. They believe in that pagan cult. I do not have a cult. So, you know, take your opinions elsewhere because you have no idea what you're talking about. Now, uh, let's go on to someone else. This, in the same thread, there's this woman, and her name is Jessica Myers. Jessica, in, in my last video, you will see that there's a woman named Jade Myers. That is Jessica's sister. Jade is the one who went searching for the truth with all her heart. She then came across my videos. She then started learning how to test the spirit. She then related to her sister, Jessica. So remember this much. Jade was the one that was actually searching for God with all her heart. Jessica was not. Jessica was just basically tagging along. So 
it really was no different than me and my brothers and sisters where I was the one searching for God with all my heart. They were not. So when I related to them, they weren't really, I guess you could say, fully committed. They believed for a bit, but then they wouldn't believe it. Well, that was Jessica. That's what happened with Jessica. And we'll go back to the power of the soul. When things happen and things started getting tough, Jessica's faith was revealed and it proved her faith wasn't real. She didn't really believe. I want to read you a couple of her comments and then I'm going to get into it. So the first thing she goes, my sister is in his cult. She disowned me two and a half years ago. She still talks to my mom, but spouts the most unchristian message I have ever heard. They claim to know who is condemned. I apparently am condemned. I was involved with this group for a while, biggest regret of my life. Then in another, she goes, sure, it's going along. Oh, it's a long story that starts three and a half years ago. My sister and I were very young Christians, maybe a year in or so, and I think it was my sister who stumbled upon his channel. He claimed to be a former multimillionaire who gave all his money away. He claimed he had gave one lady 250000 or something like that. So first he sent us his book and claimed you'll only be pain-free and healthy if you don't sin. And he also said that working is a sin, okay? I'll stop right there a minute. Look through all my videos, look through all my booklets, my writings and everything else and so forth, okay? Nowhere will you ever find that I related or said any such thing that working is a sin. Never gonna find it, never gonna hear it. A few months this changed when his daughter approached him saying she wanted to work. Two weeks later, he said working is fine now. She totally twisted what every, everything that happened there. I was already picking up on red flags, but this showed me that he changed when convenient for him. He loved the verse about the sin of rejecting the Holy Spirit. He used to this to instill fear. He used the testing experience verse to claim he heard Jesus. This was actually a crazy system he came up with. No, it's not actually a system I came up with. And as I said, as I've related time and time again, I actually discovered it in the uh, Smith Wigglesworth devotional. I spent quite a bit of time on the phone with him, okay? I talked on the phone with this woman one time, one time, and, and it wasn't a very long conversation, by the way. And the other members, mostly young kids who live with their parents. This man destroyed the relationship in our family. It's such a crazy story, complicated and still going on today. Hard to put into a comment. Thanks for exposing. And then another one, she said, what's really weird, he does not have the typical motivations of other cult leaders. I have come to the conclusion that he has a God complex that is so powerful, he actually gets his kicks out of controlling people. He actually wants to be God. Jesus, forgive me, but we used to get led by the Holy Spirit to cross out verses, especially the one in Timothy about working. We are in South Africa, by the way. He has followers from all over the world. He excommunicated the one guy for listening to the Bible in his car. I have so much info, it's ridiculous. <sighs> okay. First off, I excommunicated somebody as if I'm a religious, like I say, the Catholic religion, and I excommunicate people, you know, because they were listening. Who she's talking about, there was this person named Milan Medic, and Milan had a sickness, and if I remember, it was a, uh, an, some type of immune sickness, you know, immunity thing. Milan listened to what I were, I, I related, he then started learning to talk to God himself, and he started following. He gave up his doctors and the pills, and he got better. He still comments here and there on certain places in my video. The problem with Milan, when God had asked him, Milan was in a band. When God had asked Milan to walk away from his old life, his band, Milan couldn't do it. Milan didn't want to do it. That's the reason why Milan's no longer in our group because he, he wouldn't see it all the way through. It has nothing to do with him listening to the Bible in his car. That's how screwed up this woman is, okay? Jessica, just so you know, basically was having a baby at the time when she was learning how to test the spirits. Okay, as, as I've read to you all the scriptures before, God's gotta be the most important thing in your life. 
Well, Jessica, just to show how faith, the little, when I talked to Jessica and everything, a little bit I talked to Jessica, guess what? She didn't even tell her husband about what she believed. It showed that she really didn't believe it. She was basically doing it mainly because of her sister more than anything else. So it showed that her faith wasn't really there. So that's why Jessica eventually fell away. Well, as I've told you before, it's not me, it's God's word. You know, I have no control over Jade. Jade heard from God. Jade came to me the day that she said, I hear from God. God doesn't want me dealing with my sister anymore. And I was like, well, you know, Jade, what are you going to do? And Jade's like, I'm going to follow God. I was like, well, follow, that's what you should do. Follow God. So Jade stopped associating with her sister. I'll tell you this much. You know, when that message is written, Jade, uh, after we had had our last inning, Jade had told me how she had heard that her mother had blasphemed the spirit and I think her stepdad and God no longer wanted her to deal with them. So, you know, she, you know, I'm like, well, follow, do what God's telling you to do, Jade. So Jade stopped dealing with her mother also. So that's what's going to happen. God's not going to allow you to associate with people that don't believe. So, of course, Jessica's and her bitterness and hatred and everything else is you know, out there spreading lies, spreading nonsense and all this other kind of stuff because, you know, her sister will have nothing to do with her and everything. So, of course, she's blaming it on me all because I related the message and everything else. So, uh, I, I wanted to, uh, I want to find something else that Jessica, Jessica had made another comment and uh, I, I, I just, I'm, Jeez, I don't know if I'm, I made a note of it or not. That's what I'm trying to find. Uh, uh, okay, I found it. Anyway, right after, my wife is the one that had noticed these con that Jessica putting these comments out there, and you know, and then she told me, she told the other members, we have a group. This group, it's all of us that are able to hear from God and we communicate with each other. You know, we, we have a what you call a Facebook Messenger group where, you know, as things are happening in our lives, we, we correspond with one another. I have no control over these people. They hear from, I point them in the direction they go and live their lives. These people that don't believe or understand think that I'm somehow this magician or something that I'm able to control people's minds and thoughts and all this other kind of stuff. No, it, you know anything about me and the people that I have encountered, if somebody's trying to constantly come to me with things, I'm actually pushing them away. I'm like going, look, I'm not God. I'm not you. Now look at what Jay, uh, Jessica's sitting there saying, oh, I got a God complex. So yeah, I'm sitting here and I'm telling you that you can go directly to God. You can hear him. But yet I'm God, huh? Okay, right, right. I'm not the one that's asking you to follow me, subscribe to me, give money to me or anything, but yet I'm God. Okay, right. That's how crazy these people are. So, but when we were talking and I was talking to Jada, I was like, wow, see how your sister's going off the rails? And we were like, yeah. And we made the comment. We were like, boy, she has no idea now how she's going to end up bringing sickness and that into her life. Remember the scripture that I just read to you not too long ago, where God said, And the Lord will take away from you all sickness and will afflict you with none of the terrible diseases of Egypt, which you have known, but will lay them on all of those who hate you. So think about this now. So Jessica's out there trashing me and all this other kind of stuff and saying what I'm relating is wrong and, and all this other kind of stuff. And Jade and I are sitting there going, wow, in her bitterness and hatred, she has no idea how she's opened the door for the devil. And now the devil's going to start attacking her left and right with sickness. Well, what does she end up as she's going back and forth with these people on this site? You can even read this comment for yourself. It says, hello, sorry, I have not emailed you. I was ill. I will email you later today. And we, we just sat there. We just started going. These people just don't get it. They just won't pay attention and listen. So anyway, uh, the one other person that I want to bring out in this, these crazy wackos 
uh, there's this guy, his name was John 8457, okay? This is some guy that uh, he tried contacting me, I don't know, maybe a year ago or something, I don't know. But it's another one of these guys that, now think about it. This is a guy who still sins. Uh, well, matter of fact, think about this. All of these people, you know, the anonymous person, who I know who it is, who a woman is, uh, the uh, Jessica, the John, all of these people, they don't know how to hear the voice of Jesus. They continue to sin. They don't know how to stop sinning. They don't have God's Holy Spirit. They still have sickness and so forth. They could still get sick and everything else. Yet, they're trying to tell me what the Word of God's relating. You know, they're saying they know Scripture and that I don't, that what I'm relating is wrong. Now, I, on the other hand, I'm sitting here and I'm telling you that it's possible to hear the voice of God. I'm telling you that it's impossible to overcome sin. And I'm telling you that it's possible to live life with no sickness. Yet, they're telling me that I'm the one that's wrong and that they're the one that's right. So, yeah, they sit on the word of God and then see who you want to believe. So, but now this guy contacted me trying to tell me, well, I believe some of the stuff you're relating, but I don't, you know, I disagree with you on these other things. And as I told you, I am not going to waste my time dealing with anyone that is trying to say that what I'm relating is wrong. I know 100% without a doubt that what I'm relating is correct because I was taught directly from Jesus Christ himself, okay? So I don't listen. I didn't get my knowledge from mortal men. I got my knowledge of scripture directly from God. Any questions I had, I took directly to God and God answered them for me. So for you to try to sit there and tell me when I know you don't even know how to talk to God, remember, all I got to do is ask Jesus. Jesus will tell me if you understand. What you will find, those of us who possess the Spirit, we all hear the same thing. Why? Because we all possess the Spirit of God. So we all know my brothers and sisters in Christ, we all know who believes, who doesn't believe, who's saved, who is not saved, who's condemned, who's not condemned. We all hear the same thing. You cannot hear. You don't know God. You don't know how to talk to Jesus. So you're simply guessing at things. So do you honestly think that I'm going to be talking to someone like you and listening to someone like you? So now I want you to, I want to, now that you know these things, I want to read you some of the nonsense that this guy writes. He goes, Mike is a good case study in false humility. I think in almost every single one of this video, he ends it by saying, I never ask anyone for money. Never going to happen. But if he's not interested in other people's money, why does he always bring it up? Why do you even bring up the subject? I bring it up because of goofballs like you. That's why, because I got people out there saying that I'm scamming people out of money and everything else. If you look at that no-nonsense Christian guy, he's like obsessed trying to understand, well, how's he getting his money? How's this working? How's he scamming people and everything else? The, the, the moron doesn't understand is that I know how to talk to God. If I have a financial need, God provides it for me. He tells one of my brothers and sisters, hey, Mike's going to need some help. Send them money. I don't have to ask anybody. That's why you'll never hear me ask anybody for money. You know, everybody thinks like I'm this like a total millionaire that I'm ripping people off left and right. No, I live comfortably. I have no bills or anything like that. But I'm, I'm nowhere near the wealth that I used to have or anything like that. And it doesn't bother me in the least. I've had some people sitting there say, oh, he's bitter and this and that. No, I'm like sitting here going, my life is perfect. And you know, like this woman sitting there saying, my wife is trouble. My wife's sitting there going, what, what, what world are these people living in? What the heck are they even seeing or so forth? That's how delusional these people are. They're seeing things that's not even there. They think that somehow, like I'm controlling my wife even, or my kids and everything else, that I've got some type of psychic powers or whatever where I can, you know, 
convince them that they got to do this or they got to do that and everything else. No, you don't get it because you don't know God in the least. You have no idea who God is. Anyway, to show you how this guy is so delusional and hatred, uh, uh, he, he writes in another note, he, and this is, I think, where he was talking to uh, the anonymous person who wants to, she wants to try to keep herself hidden. I agree with you about his wife looking troubled, especially in this last video. Mike also looked uneasy, looked like a little frazzled. I have no idea what, see, they want to see whatever they want to see. However, I totally disagree with you comparing to him to David Koresh and Jim Jones. They live with their followers in communes. Mike is not social at all. I could go into the differences, but thank God he's not like them. Mike is a toothless, callless, internet, paper tiger. The only power he has in the power his followers give him. So I've got followers, huh? I've been studying that this is, I've been studying Mike over the last year and I had one encounter with him in one of his videos. It was last November or December. I don't want to go into the details, but I was very honest with everything that I shared with him. Now realize this is a guy that doesn't know how to talk to God. He doesn't really understand the word of God. He still sins. He still has sickness in his life, but yet he wants to try to tell me what the word of God is relating. Okay. Uh, I told him that I agreed and disagreed with things that he believed. I just want to have some dialogue with him man to man. Mike is a man that doesn't understand dialogue. It's his way or the highway. Yes. Guess what? I converse with many, many, many people. I have dialogues with many people. I'm willing to help anybody that's willing to learn, that's willing to listen. If you're somebody, though, that's out there and you're trying to give me advice and tell me, you know, guess what? You think I'm going to listen to you? It's not going to happen. Especially if you're somebody that still has sickness in your life, that doesn't know God, who's still sinning. Why would I listen to a child of the devil? I'm not going to allow a child of the devil to enter my life. You people are so ignorant, it isn't even funny. Every single word that I told him was the truth. No, it wasn't the truth, pal. And of course, he attacked me like he attacks everyone else that doesn't agree with what he believes in. The usual, you're a child of Satan. That's correct, because you are a child of Satan. <laughs> He goes, I'm laughing as I'm writing this, and I'm going to hell, you know. There are my conclusions on Mike. Here's my conclusions on Mike. Mike is an old man. He's 70 years old. Now I'm actually 68, going on 69. He just wants to be left alone in his little house in the mountains. Mike does not care about anyone except his dogs and his immediate family. I can provide other people that will tell you differently. He hopes to bring in some cash by daily, by doing his silly, boring, moronic, demonic, as David often, often says, once you've seen one, you've seen them all videos. Because, now listen, this guy, he can't even tell that this David Hofton guy is as wicked, demonic, clueless as they come, and yet he's agreeing with him. So that should tell you something about this guy. As I said, go look at the, uh, the uh, cover of the last video that that guy did about me. If that doesn't prove to you that the guy isn't the least bit Christian, then you don't know God at all. So anyway, he goes, because God healed him and he gave away a lot of his possessions. Now he automatically thinks that he's sinless. Wrong. I went through God's sanctification process, purification process. That's how I got sanctified. You can't make this stuff up, can you? I have more to say, but not enough time. I'm doing all this because I want to see the device of Mike's call. See how wicked these people are? How, how it's, it, they're, they're just like the people that when they say they have Trump derangement syndrome, here you go. It's the beginning of the end. This is all very spiritually deep for me. God bless all involved in this fiasco. This is how clueless, wicked and everything these people are they think i have a cult that i'm controlling people and everything else that i'm after people's money and all this other kind of stuff they have no idea who god is what it's all about and it's all because the things that god has me relating is literally driving them nuts it just drives them insane 
and yet they're trying to say, I'm the one with the mental illness. It's like, okay, I'm sitting here, I'm telling you, I have no cares, no worries, no fears, no concerns. I'm telling you how great God is, how loving he is, that you can have these blessings in your own life if you would just do what he's asking you to do. Yet I'm the crazy one. They're living with sicknesses, diseases, and everything else. And yet they're trying to say, I'm the one with the mental illness. Lord help me, these people are nuts. So anyway, they constantly, they're saying that I'm mean and nasty because when I'm confronted by a lot of these people, I'll call them a child of the devil. Realize this much, you're either a child of the God or you're a child of the devil. And scripture even tells you that. So, and they say I'm not Christian-like because when somebody comes to me and I say, look, you're a child of Satan, you have no idea. You may think that you're a child of God, but if you're still sinning, you're a child of the devil. They, of course, don't want to hear that they're a child of the devil. So that means in their eyes, I'm mean and nasty. I'm unchristian like. That's what Jessica's trying to say about her sister Jade, you know, because Jade had the faith to see it through. Jade was willing to stand against her husband. Her husband basically confronted Jade and said, Jade, stop believing this, otherwise I'm going to divorce you. Jade said, no, I know what I'm believing is the truth. I'm going to stand on it. So what happened? Her husband divorced her, okay? Jessica, on the other hand, was afraid to tell her husband what she believed and everything else because she was afraid of that type of stuff because she didn't really believe it in her heart. That's what happened. So Jade was willing to stand up for God, just like I am willing to stand up for God. I'm willing to stand against the lies of everybody who tries to say, no, this is impossible. I'm sitting here and telling you, yeah, these things are possible. All things are possible to the one who believes that God is real, that he means what he says, and that he will do these things in your life if you will believe them. Well, these are all people that don't believe. So. Now think about it. They're saying that I'm mean and nasty because I call them children of the devil and things like that and that Jesus would have never done those things. So now I want to read you some things, okay? I know for a fact, go through scripture, Jesus openly rebuked people and I'm going to give you the things. He called people fools, foolish ones, evil, wicked, heathens, hypocrites, brood of vipers, sons of hell, and your father is the devil. Those are all terms Jesus used when talking. Why do you think they hated Jesus so much? Why do you think they wanted to see him crucified? Because he's basically, it's the same thing I'm experiencing because I'm telling people the truth. Look, you're sinning. You're going against God. You're doing evil in the eyes of God. People don't want to hear it. They don't want to believe it. So, of course, they're going to attack you. And, you know, they're going to call you every name and this and that and so forth in the book. So I call them for what they are. You're a child of the devil. So I want to give you a scripture where in John 8, 44, Jesus says, You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. So like a Jessica, so anonymous uh, and... Uh, John 8, 4, 5, 7, you're all of the devil. You just want to do your father's desires. You don't know God. You don't know God in the least. And if you think I'm going to waste my time on you, you got another thing coming. So I'll give you another example of where Paul was concerned. And then Saul, better known as Paul, was filled with the Holy Spirit. He looked straight at Elamis and said, you son of the devil, you are a liar, a crook, and an enemy of everything that is right. When will you stop speaking against the true ways of the Lord? Well, I can use that same exact verse against all those people that I just listed in that video. They're all liars. They're all twisting the truth. They're trying to sit there and tell you that it's impossible to stop sinning, that we're always going to sin. They're trying to tell you that all they're going to do is say, oh, I believe in Jesus and I'm saved. I don't need to do anything else. Well, I just gave you, I just spent all this time going over all the things that God's asking you to do that you're going to have to do if you want to earn your way into heaven. If you want to become a child of God, you are going to have to learn how to live a holy and righteous life. You are going to have to allow the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ to guide you in your life. 
If you don't have that, then guess what? You don't know God. You don't know him the least. So if you have sickness in your life, then yeah, I've given you the scriptures that show you don't know God. You're disobeying God. You're living a lie. God said he would remove sickness from anyone who obeyed him. So if you believe the word of God, if you believe his word is his truth, then you should have that in your own life. And if you don't, then that proves you don't know God. You don't know him the least, you're living a lie. So all these people, you know, I, I don't waste my time on them, okay? I know some of my other brothers and sisters see these things and everything else. Like, like that last video, that uh, no-nonsense guy, I haven't even watched the thing or so forth. I've already, when God... Anytime somebody tries to say that what I'm relating is wrong, God's going to have me do a video exposing that person's nonsense. I did a video. I already exposed that the guy's a child of Satan, that he's, he's, con he's, look, he's a condemned soul. He's never going to be saved. So, of course, he's going to try to do everything he can to try to justify himself or whatever in that regard. He doesn't realize, but same thing as like with Jessica and that's concerned. All he's going to end up doing the day is going to come, believe me, and the day is going to come where the devil's going to have, it's, he's going to start taking over. And that guy is just going to have so many afflictions in his life, it isn't even going to be funny. He's going to allow his nonsense that he's relating, his hatred for the truth, destroy his soul. His soul is done. He's going to be one miserable person in the future, believe me. It will happen. It will occur because he doesn't know God. He doesn't know him in the least. So none of these people know God. And all they are, as I say, Jessica was just, you know, so they're all sitting out there saying, oh man, we need to do more videos about this. We need to do this. We need to get, well, guess what? You're, all you're doing is just listening to people that fell away who condemned their souls. They have no idea what the word of God. So now they're bitter and, and things like that. Jessica's just a bitter woman. So she's mad at her sister and everything else, and she thinks that I somehow had control over her sister. I have no control over Jade. Jade, you don't believe me? Message Jade directly. Jade will tell you and so forth. Message anybody, you know, that uh, in the videos that I do or so forth. They'll come right out and tell you. I, I don't tell them what to do or what to say or anything like that. I have no control. I point them in the direction just like as I'm doing with you in these videos. I'm telling you, look, you can go to directly to God. You can talk to him. If you do it, you don't need me. Why would you come back to me? I'm, I'm nobody. I'm just a mortal man. I'm not God, by the way. So, And I don't have a God complex. I know God. I follow God. I believe in God. I trust God. I love God. And I know that God loves me and he's protecting me and he's taking care of me. So anyway, I believe I've covered everything now. It's all done. And uh, look, I've, I've shown you what you need to do. I've gone through everything. Uh, if you want to grow with God, You've got to allow God to make these changes in your life. You've got to be willing to make these sacrifices. You've got to be willing to allow God to change you into a child of God. And yet, yeah, you've got to learn how to stand up against the wicked people of this world. You're going to have tons of people, just like I showed you here, that are going to come against you. They're going to say you're crazy. They're going to call you nuts. They're going to tell you it's impossible. They're going to tell you, oh, that's not real. That, you know, or that's not so, and they're going to tell you you need churches and all this other kind of stuff. No, don't listen to them. You can go directly to God. You don't need any mortal man. You don't need me. You don't need any of these people. You have the ability to go directly to God. God dwells inside of you. You got to learn how to listen to him. If you want him in your life, you have to repent. You have to be willing to sit there and say, I do not want to live the way this world is living. I now want to live the way a child of God lives. That's what the things you need to do. And it's got to be that God's got to be the most important thing in your life. If he's not, you are never going to grow with God. It's just not going to happen. God has to be first over mother, father, daughter, you know, whatever, wife, children, anything. If it's not God, then guess what? You're, you're never going to grow. You're never going to fail, and you're going to be condemned for all eternity. So, all right, I did the video. It's done. Praise the Lord. It's over, and uh, 
you know, just so they got John guy. Guess what? Why do you think that in every video I give my name, my age, you know, where I am and things? I got nothing to hide. And guess what? I'm documenting everything so that you can see that through the years, I'm, I'm never going to have sickness. I'm not going to need doctors. I'm not going to die of whatever, a disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, or anything like that. Never going to happen. You know, I know this much is going to happen in your life, not going to happen in mine. So, anyway, I'm done. Praise God. And when he wants me back, I'll be back with another. So, you won't see the end. So, you'll see the end of you, but... Not of me. I'll see you later. Bye. Praise the Lord.